My name's Colin Murphy. I, am, I work at Adobe, um, and this is Doug. Doug works at Akamai. Say hi, Doug. Hi, Thanks everyone. For... <laughs> uh, he's got to make sure his work mic works. Um, OK, so let's go. Let's go. An uninventive and somewhat wordy title. I think I got workshopped. Um, so we'll, we're doing our best here. All right, so I'm going to ask a few provocative questions and maybe, unfortunately, insult people here. I'm sorry. Um, Probably not, but you never know. Um, I'm going to do some exposition dump about what, uh, why I, what I do at Adobe. Um, and then I'm going to talk about our demo. So it's really about the demo, um, but you know, just laying the groundwork here. So there'll be a little bit of d knowledge, and then there'll be some demo. Um, and the, OK, so the first provo pro uh, pro you know, provocative, semi-insulting question is, why isn't Adobe using edge compute? And I can tell you one reason it's not, and it's not from lack of trying on my part. I think I've tried to get us to use every single cloud provider out there. I'm talking with Doug, so you know the, the journey continues. Um, but why aren't we? So I, I did. I tried to ask the question. I've been at Adobe for a number of years now, um, so I know a lot of people, and I asked that question. And uh, this is what I got. So. Um, it's too different from other programming, right? You're a Java engineer, you work on Spring Boot, and that's what you do. And that's how you solve problems, right? That's, that's a lot of Adobe for the server-side problems. Um, uh, if you have a really good use case for edge compute, it takes a whole separate group of people deploying that or becoming subject matter experts in that particular framework. Um, and then they have to in somehow integrate that in, and now they're coordinating those deployments of that with your deployments. I mean, there is something to that anyway. Like, we have a lot of static assets, right? But edge compute seems more like server-side compute, server-side programming, and less about assets. Um, so it's just different. It's like another thing you have to do, right? And then just lack of capabilities, right? And, and you know, that lack of capabilities, by the way, is why we all hate That's why there's a WasmCon, right? We're trying to add capabilities. Edge compute's a big part of that, right? It's no, it's no coincidence, right, that the last two people up here were off of Fastly. Luke gave a talk. He works at Fastly. We've got Cosmonic, we've got Fermion, right? Server-side compute, edge compute, right? And we're trying to improve that. We're trying to improve those capabilities. And then, you know, I, I, one of, I have a quote from one of the people, and it's, the last thing you want to do is spin up another Kubernetes, right? So I'm sorry. I'm sorry if, if that's your thing, uh, to make people spin up more Kubernetes, but that's hard. You know, it's a lot. Uh, so, so, you know, so we want something. Okay, so let's just say, what do we want? You know, what do we want to, to have, use edge compute? Okay, well, it's got to be multi-tenant, right? It, it, we're not going to spin up a separate, a separate whole set of, you know, platform for every team at your company. And you want, ideally, you really just want this to be a service, right? There's a reason that EKS isn't a fully managed service. There's a reason AKS isn't a fully managed service. It's because Docker and Kubernetes are not made for multi-tenancy like WebAssembly is, right? You want it to be global. You don't want to be deploying to every single cluster. You don't want to be upgrading every single cluster all around the world. You don't want to be deploying, you know, this is our, you know, this is, this is our package for this cluster. This is our package for this cluster. This is our, you're right. Uh, you don't want it to look, and you, you know, and I already explained that you don't want it to look too different when you deploy to Edge. Um, so it's global. Wasm Cloud's global. But the lattice stretches across multiple Kubernetes clusters or uh, deployments of Wasm Cloud, right? Um, oh, yeah, sorry, uh, conflict of interest statement. I'm a, I'm a maintainer of Wasm Cloud, so. But, you know, I, I came to that, you know, because I like it. Um, uh, and then, uh, so Wasm Cloud stays up to date, right? Wasm P2, that comes out. Uh, Wasm, it's in Wasm Cloud, right? You want the latest thing to come out of the Bytecode Alliance and the W3C subgroup for <coughs> Wasm. It's going to be in Wasm Cloud. And then, um, you know, and then we get the WebAssembly benefits of efficiency, which hopefully, if you've heard any talks today, you, you've gotten that, and the security. All right, so here's the exposition dump. Uh, I work for the Content Authenticity Initiative, and it's a, um, it's a consortium uh, uh, that, pr that pr promotes an industry, industry standard for provenance metadata. So provenance means, like, where did it come from? And we call that content credentials to help curb disinformation and increase trust and transparency online. So we have 
camera manufacturers, we have editing software, Adobe. Uh, we have social media platforms like Meta. We have media companies like the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and many, many others. It's a big group. Um, and we have this thing called the C2PA, which is another organization that has other companies in it. And that has open source libraries and tools. And we have Adobe services around those uh, open source libraries and tools. OK, so that's, that's what you want to know. So you want to know the whole idea is, ideally, somebody takes a picture, they edit that picture, they publish that picture, and then you somehow get that picture. Right? You download it. And when you download that picture, you can easily see that chain. Of that chain. So those things that are happened are recorded into a manifest, and that gets signed and can be verified and so that you know that this is what happened to this image. Like, what is this image, and where, where did it come from, where did it, how was it edited, that kind of thing. Um, so it's not a, it doesn't solve the whole problem of, like, here's a random picture, is it true or not? It's just saying, hey, I know this is true, right? Okay, so the cool thing about uh, C2PA, C2PA RS, it's an open source library. You can, well, whatever, we'll have some notes, I think, at some point. Um, so it's open source. Uh, C2PA RS, it's a Rust library, which is really nice because Rust is a great language to compile to WebAssembly. We have lots of use cases. We have got web. So we've already got that. That's working. Web uh, Wasm. We've got server use cases. We have servers that run Rust. So hopefully at some point, they'll be WASI. And then we have embedded use cases. This stuff runs on cameras, right? We're trying to get this into cameras. Um, and, and other other devices that produce content, right? Um, so it's really just, and then we also have multiple SDKs. So there are SDKs for Python and JavaScript and Node um, and C and Rust, obviously. Um, so, you know, great, great WASM use case. Like some, we could maybe make a component and we could not have to make all these SDKs someday, right? Um, and, you know, and the other thing with open source, we can really forge a path for others to follow we can collaborate with other trailblazers. We can share your, our code, which is really easy when you're trying to solve a problem. Um, OK, so there is a service, a service, a content authenticity initiative, C2PA service that we'd like to have. It doesn't exist yet, but it would, be sol it would solve this problem, which is they, take a you know, they use the, the right camera, they use the right editing software, they put it on the right media site or the right uh, the right um, social media site, and you click on it, guess what happens? You don't get any of that provenance data right now, um, unless you have some sort of specialty service, which they exist, like Adobe Stock, Adobe Firefly. But, but for the most part, you're, you're, all of that metadata gets stripped out. <clears throat> and when you, when you download an image, however you download it, it's usually proxied through a CDN, Akamai, right? Or, or what have you. Um, and, uh, and it's, that, that resizing of that image strips out all the metadata and you don't get it. Okay, so that's the problem we're trying to solve here with this demo. We're, gonna, we're going to download some software. I mean, sorry, we're gonna download an image. And that C2PA, it's going to resize that image. And, it, and the C2PA and that resizing will be recorded. And then it will be signed. And you will have that as you download the image. Um, and what's really interesting about this use case is it can't, doesn't really work in the data center and it doesn't really work purely on the edge. So if you run it purely on the edge, uh, Adobe con Adobe's signing keys are you know, very uh, highly prized and we do not want those things just living anywhere. So we use AWS for that, right? Or Cloud, Cloud HSM. Um, and we don't, so we can't live on the edge. And then if we put it in the data center, now all this traffic <laughs> from all these sites is now going through our VPCs and our VNets, and we're paying for networking costs, right? And, and you know, video streams, things like that, that stuff will rack up some bills for you, right? So it'd be pro prohibitively expensive. And also the cool thing is it has to, we have to have something talk on the, receive a request on the edge, do something in a data center, and then have it come back out to the edge. So that's, that's hard, right? That, that'd be very difficult to do with today's um, uh, edge compute. Okay, and um, and so yes, I did already demo this in Amsterdam a year and a half ago. But just in case we have any repeat people, um, 
it was a lot different. So um, a year and a half ago, I had nine, I had to fork nine different crates. It was only kind of half working. I didn't have validation. Um, it was obviously WASI P1. There was no P2 yet. And it was all just running on my laptop. Um, <clears throat> and so I'm not really demoing that, hey, you can use, whereas before I was saying, you can compile something to WASI and it can do something. Now I'm saying, you can compile something to WASI and run it across, in this case, Akamai, uh, Gecko, and AWS, and have it actually work, fully work. Um, and also now I changed jobs, so now actually I'm on the team. Um, so I can actually make this a product, hopefully. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, so I kind of already explained it. Um, there's, a, there's a get request it, uh, the, you, you want, you basically, if you look at that get request, <clears throat> I'm telling it to pull down an image from somewhere, and I'm telling it what the width I want it to be. Um, <clears throat> so that's happening uh, at the edge. Um, everything's really happening at the edge, and I just kind of have this like placeholder, hey, I want to, um, I want to store this image asynchronously in S3. <coughs> um, in the real use case, uh, of course, uh, there'll be that KMS piece that I talked about before. And also, we've got a CDN in front of it, thankfully. So if somebody tries to hit it, this, this URL is not the right one because I don't want you to crash my site before it starts. But, um, but um, don't try it. Um, but uh, who knows where it, where it goes. Um, but uh, yeah, we have a CDN in front of it to help with the load. So, so even, even once you see the URL, if you were so inclined, hopefully it won't bring it down. Um, and so, also not to, there's a single WADAM manifest. WADAM is a tool we have in Wasm Cloud, and uh, it's a single YAML, you know. We like YAML here, we're all at KubeCon, right? We like YAML. Um, there's a single YAML for this application, it's got a few different pieces in it. it, has two components and four providers, but it's a single YAML. You can deploy it to an endpoint, and all of the WebAssembly, all of the Wasm Clouds, uh, are updated. And you can target something for Akamai, you can see there, on the one on the left, it's targeting Akamai, this is the one for Akamai, and this is what I want to run on AWS. So really declarative, you know, Taylor who worked on it, is Taylor here? He's not. Taylor, are you here? No, it's not coming to my docs, okay. I'm just gonna, you know, tell him he did a great job, it's not here. Um, but you know, we call this Helm 4, jok jokingly, because he worked on Helm 3. Um, all right. So yeah, you, you apply this, and it just goes out. Everything just works. <clears throat> All right, so here's, I'm going to turn it over to Doug, and I'm going to get a glass of water. Thanks. Thank you, Colin. So what I would like to talk about is uh, the, the vision that we have for the evolution of these cloud deployments to enable solutions such as the ones that Colin described. Um, first, I would like to start with this uh, core uh, cloud model. It's the typical cloud deployment that you're most certainly familiar with. You have a, cu a couple of locations, in this case, tens of locations, and you have uh, the illusion that you have virtual, uh, essentially unlimited capacity available to you. You can always request more resources and you can run your applications without any uh, limits put in place. The next, we are trying to introduce this concept of a distributed cloud. We're not only talking about tens of locations, but having applications that can ideally run in hundreds of locations, much closer to users, in a, in a hopefully not so different environment from the perspective of the developer. We're still gonna offer you uh, generalized compute resources. Uh, Wasm and WebAssembly is a technology that's phenomenal for this type of solution since it's so lightweight and can run well in uh, environments where, where you are naturally resource constrained. And then to combine that, we have the uh, original edge type of deployment. This is what traditional CDN companies offer. You may, have, you may be familiar with worker type of solutions where you run a little bit of code very close to the uh, outer edge of this cloud where your customers uh, access your website or your application or solution. Uh, these solutions are great. They, are, they run everywhere. They are very ubiquitous. But one limitation that we often see here is you are often uh, limited by the idea of writing your code in such a way that you, you're implementing a processing 
in the request response transaction. Works great in some scenarios, but not everywhere. And with, with this type of solutions, we're, we're, we're seeing uh, enormous potential to implement unique in, 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 new, in, in creative solutions as uh, to leverage the best of all these layers of what we've been calling this uh, hyper-distributed cloud. And to give you a, a more material example, I want to go, go over another uh, scenario where we're implementing distributed composition uh, of these services. And I have them color-coded here, mapping to the layers of these preview edge that, that I described to you. So uh, the idea here is essentially to implement a product recommendation feature that's based on weather forecast. It doesn't have to be weather forecast. You may have a better way to know what your customers may, may be interested in. But actually, this use case, the, or this specific implementation lends itself very well to also highlight the ability of making an external <coughs> API call. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I want to walk you from the right to the left. You see the request entering this ecosystem. And at the edge layer, where you have these thousands of locations, uh, code that you, you can run in thousands of locations, you do some very basic processing at the initial stage, which is just in, uh, accept the, the request in and use uh, an IP geolocation service to know where your, where your user is. Uh, that's not the type of uh, geolocation data that you have to like enable your browser to share. This is essentially coarse grained geographic data that we can have by essentially looking at where the client is connecting from. This is a database, but this is a local database. Every edge server has a copy of this database. It's very static, it's essentially uh, a lookup in a file that you're performing. Uh, next, we're gonna use a global router to call a WASM service. That's where we have the bulk of our logic, but I wanna highlight the important role of the global router here. Since we're talking about this green component, this WASM component being running uh, eventually in hundreds of locations, you need to be able to connect your end user that may be anywhere in the globe to one of these hundreds of locations efficiently. You want to send your, your user to a location that is available, healthy, and that is uh, geographically close to your user. Why? Because you're often interested in uh, leveraging the benefits of this platform to address one of two circumstances. The first one would be low latency. You want your pages to load fast. You want to have provide a responsive uh, experience to your user. And the second aspect is you wanna avoid moving too many bytes around this wall stack, right? Not only, I, I, I like to call out that this translates into two types of inefficiencies. The first one is that you're gonna have a slow application. Your users are gonna, uh, the performance is gonna hurt. And the second is there's cost involved in move, moving this, uh, these bytes around, especially uh, when you're leveraging uh, cloud providers to do so, there's often uh, a, data, a data transfer fee associated with your services. So if you can move fewer bytes around, you normally can uh, respond to requests faster and you can uh, save on your, with your cloud provider bill. And then this uh, green component, this WASM components, is what I wrote to play the role of uh, an orchestrator here, if you will. He, he, he receives this request that, remember, had uh, uh, user geolocation data available uses this uh, geolocation data to call the weather API from weather.gov, it's an openly accessible API. There are two arrows there because it makes two calls, one first to resolve the location and the second to resolve a forecast for that location. And uh, once the, that forecast information is returned, uh, I'm gonna use this information to do a lookup in a product catalog that I created. It's just a relational database here for really no special reason. Any data source can, uh, would, would work just fine. But I'm gonna use what is your uh, short-term weather forecast to look up product recommendations. If you're gonna have uh, warm weather, I'm gonna recommend you something. If, you're gonna have, if you have cold weather in the forecast, I'm gonna recommend something else. So uh, that at a high level is how all these components integrate. All right, so that's in the demo. So what he's describing is in the demo. We put a lot of stuff into the demo, so hopefully we can get through it. No, we got 15 minutes. We'll be fine. All right. Okie doke. <coughs> Dry mountain air. Okay, so this is the web page, and I'm going to refresh it. All right, let's see. Okay, whoa, that was great. All right, so... Um, Really fast. 
Thank you, con content delivery networks. OK, so Doug just said it. So I'm going to kind of go over what Doug just said, and he can correct me. He can jump in with his mic anytime. Um, OK, so we have a localized weather forecast, um, which, he <clears throat> which he talked about. And we've got recommendations based on the temperature. So I think we picked it, I don't know, 50, what was the temperature? Around 60. Around 60 temperature. degrees. So maybe it's that warm outside. I don't know, but blame the weather service if it's not. Um, and so if it's above 60 degrees, we have a certain products. And so earlier this morning, there were different products here uh, and uh, that were being shown. OK? And, uh, <clears throat> and so then if we look at this, this picture and we inspect it, uh, we, with the content authenticity uh, website, contentcredentials.org, uh, we can look up what's where you know the provenance of the data of the image. So it was taken by a camera that didn't have any sort of C2BA um, capabilities, right? <clears throat> no content, so nothing. And then it was put into Adobe Stock and signed with Adobe credentials on November fourth of this year, and then, actually, when I downloaded it. And then um, it was signed on the edge, on the Akamai edge, uh, with a test signing cert, because I'm not putting Adobe credentials in my demo. Um, so sorry, you're going to have to deal with this orange thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and so it was signed on the edge by, 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 uh, by Wasm Cloud running on Akamai. <clears throat> All right. And then the other one was generated by Adobe Firefly. <laughs> and then signed by that, then resized by my, by that proxy running on Wasm Cloud at the edge. Um, Doug, am I missing anything? I want to show the, go back just to show. Oh the yeah, I have, uh, yeah. I have some, I have more, I have more I want to say. Got it. Thank you. you have the, let me sk I'll skip over to the, just so you have a look at what this looks like for the weather that forecast that we're oh, not yeah. getting. So you see the difference in the product recommendations. And just one quick call out here to the performance numbers we were obser observing. I really think this excels. Uh, if you think about it, what, what you're seeing there is a bunch of handoffs, right? We have. Uh, code running in three locations, edge, uh, distributed in core, uh, one relational database involved, two, a two API lookups. I think that having these numbers in something that is, by the way, not optimized for performance yet. I have yeah, we're running in a single edge location in a single AWS data center. So this is, we're on the cheap here. Uh, so I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so this is, this is one what we're, so there are, your, your, the front end has, your database has three edge locations. The database is centralized, but oh, the, the, database green, is the centralized. green service, the WASM service, run in three different loca locations across the continental United States. Yes, yeah. and then the signing service runs in only one. But so, in a, you know, in a production use case, we'd be using many, many different edge locations, and we'd have really good localized results. Um, and uh, just the fact that you can actually put in a URL here, I switch if I switch back. Uh, this we do not have, this capability within this capability right here, where you can just put in a content, uh, a URL and, uh, and a width, and then get back. There we go. Okay, need to warm up the cache first. Um, okay, but, but here, so this is, you know, so this is all being done server side. So it's fetching on the server side. It's not, it's not a client side library. Um, and this should work too. This might take a little longer, but um, but yeah. So um, yeah. So it's all doing it on server side, which is really nice. Especially you know as you extend this out to further to more things like AI and that kind of stuff, right? There's some devices you want to be running it locally on the person. Like if they have an M3, yeah. Or do you do the AI? Do the model inference there? If they don't, if you know if it's a ten year old Android phone, you know run it on the edge, right? These are the kinds of things that we can, we want to be thinking about, we want to be doing. Um, yeah, and then I've got, yeah, I do have a couple more slides, just kind of where we're going. Uh, hopefully KubeCon EU uh, 
you know, it's London. It's in London, everybody. Um, so, um, yeah, so in the future, we uh, would like to get some sort of a spec for bundling of static assets with the application, some kind of universal spec across the CDNs, and just general WebAssembly. Um, I want to migrate services from Kubernetes to Wasm Cloud, right? <clears throat> um, we got to work on embedded use cases for, um, and uh, actually publish a C2PA component. So right here's the, here's like an interface that we can publish, <clears throat> we can generate this interface, generate this component and put it out there. And then people who want to use content authenticity, C2PA, our C2PA API, they just can use this component. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's the goal. Um, right, so, and then they could use that for embedded use cases, kind of put the, the uh, cart before the horse, but there's a lot that needs to do, happen before then, so, um, but that is the goal. So, right, so it's a, it's a really good WASM use case. Web, embedded, and web services. All right, anything else? That's all. Okay, thanks everybody. <clears throat>
you can have WebAssembly code running in any of these tiers. You know, I think we, we I like hearing earlier today that WebAssembly escaped the browser, but it can also run in the browser, right? So imagine that you can write your own components and now you can run a piece of it or a version of it in the browser. You can run it in, the, in this outer edge, the first one that you, your client interacts with. This is a more centralized web edge that has more resources, more dependencies, and even your core locations, where then you have all your data there, you have GPUs, you have hardware-specific resources. So to me, uh, WebAssembly is really this evolution that will let developers reason about their application, their business logic once, and then identify bits and pieces of it that can be deployed and installed into this location. Does, does that help? Yeah, that does. I was curious, because uh, maybe follow-up question, because like, um, is it, it wasn't currently deployed on all of Akamai's edge servers, because? Not, not on all of Akamai. In this particular case, I, should, I chose three locations of our generalized this, compute yeah. offering to run, to run but, the service on. Yeah, so, so what we did here can be run on Akamai today. Okay. Yeah, Got it in for you guys. They're over there. Uh, yeah, so this is a thing. So we ran Wasm Cloud. So actually, so in AWS, it's running on ECS Fargate. Wasm Cloud's running on ECS Fargate. And then in Akamai, it's running on Kubernetes. Uh, in your environment, it is in yeah. Kubernetes. Yeah, one of them's running in Kubernetes, one is not. All right, so um, well, there was a lot to this service. Um, but yeah, this is, sorry, this is the thing, this is the takeaway, is that you can, what, was, what we couldn't do before, and now we can do, right? It's a, big, it's a big jump. Before you could not do this on CDNs, and now you can run this kind of thing on CDNs. Um, and have it connect in with your, data, with your data centers without sharing credentials. It's just a direct connection through NATs on the Wasm Cloud Lattice between your different locations. So I mean, that's, that's the problem is like, we, we, I give, I've given this talk a few different times and like, for myself, it's not new anymore, but it's a big deal. <laughs> like, it's not possible before. All right. Question? Why is actually the, the authentication running? So Sorry, what? Your authentication are an image. So yeah. Where actually the authentication is running? Is in the it, browser? No, it's, all, it's running in the edge. It's running in edge compute. Akamai, Akamai has uh, many different locations in which they have compute of different tiers that Doug laid out, and you can run things here. So. That's where it's happening. Like everything's happening there. It's all server side. Even though it uses WebAssembly, it's running a server side WebAssembly, web and and even though it's localized to you, it's localized to you on the server side. So uh, may you follow up? So you are actually uh, authentication the the result of the uh, of the edge. What what you are receiving from the edge? Is yeah. That? Okay. Yep. Yeah, all the processing's happening on the edge. I mean, obviously there's a part of this is in the browser. I mean, it's pulling in a web page that's feeding it static assets and an image, but that's all server side. It's not, it's not, a, it's not, the, it's not client code that's doing anything other than receiving the image, you know. Um, yeah. All right. So go down in history. This is a big deal. Okay, thanks.